Happy Sabbath. A very warm welcome to New Life Seventh day Adventist Church, Fifth Ngong Avenue, Nairobi. Today we begin a new quarter, a new lesson, another opportunity to experience God's marvelous grace, to have an in depth study of His purpose for our lives, and to influence our lives positively, even as we wait in joyful hope for the soon coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Join us today as we delve right into the Word of God. Interestingly, we are considering the Epistle to the Ephesians, an interesting book, I must say. We are going to journey with Paul as he writes his letter to the people of Ephesus. Interesting to note that the Epistle of Ephesians is not just confined to Ephesians itself. We have snippets from the book of Acts, and must I also add, the letter to the churches of Revelation, Ephesus is considered. It will be an interesting journey. I invite you to join us with your Bible. If you have an opportunity with your lesson study, that as we get into this study, we may experience that which God has for us. Now, to help us study this uh, epistle to the Ephesians is a team of esteemed panelists uh, that I present to you this morning. And to my immediate left is our sister Janet. Say hello to our viewers. Happy Sabbath and welcome. Thank you very much. To my right, known to you from our previous study, is our brother Raphael. Say hello to the viewers. Happy Sabbath and uh, welcome to the program today. Thank you. I'm your host, Becky Omondi. Before we proceed any further, we'll get an opening prayer from Sister Janet. Okay, let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we want to worship your name this morning. We want to exalt you and praise your name. We thank you for another opportunity you've given unto us to come this day to listen from your word and also share the lesson with the rest of our brethren. Lord, we ask for the presence of the Holy Spirit to be with us as we begin and um, give us the insights of your word as we start until we come to the end of it. Forgive us our sins. And bless us now as we start until the end. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Um, thank you very much. We delve right into our study. Uh, Brother Raphael, um, for context's sake, the book of Ephesians that we are considering says, Ephesians, how to follow Jesus in trying times. And I just can't help but wonder why is it significant that immediately after the three cosmic messages we are studying about the Ephesians. What about them that is so um, significant to the time that we live in? I think uh, it's uh, very profound and, 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 and quite, uh, quite uh, in keeping with, uh, with, with Christian growth in that the previous lesson was encouraging us to follow Christ and giving us the reasons why we need to follow Christ. But in the book of Ephesians, uh, we are now uh, re dealing with the reality of what it means to follow Christ. That for a fact, there will be challenges. For a fact, there are certain aspects of our culture and of our society that uh, um, have uh, over time taken uh, preeminence in our lives. And, and, uh, and now when we choose to follow Christ, Christ sort of brings a, a new culture. A godly culture which may not necessarily be at par or may not agree with the rest of our society and these are some of the challenges that the Ephesians were having the Ephesian Christians you know their environment their economy all these aspects and 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 and, and once they had had the call of Christ and the and what it means what it entails uh, to follow Christ we saw there were some of those challenges and so the, uh, this quarter's lesson is simply trying to encourage us in our Christian work uh, expanding to us the realities of the challenges of the Ephesian Ephesian Christians which also can um, there's nothing new under the sun and also be translated to our own lives as we journey this walk with Christ. What are some of the uh, issues that we may come across? And um, we'll see that some of these issues are also tackled with the Ephesians. Thank you very much. That, that's um, very profound that the church in Ephesus or the Ephesians gives us an opportunity to reflect on our current situation and the world that we live in with all its vices and how we can um, carve for ourselves a niche in Christ and mm. follow him all the way. Thank you. Sister Janet, uh, I wonder in your previous study of the book of Ephesians, what are some of the things that stood out for you um, that you're looking forward to considering even as we study our lesson this quarter? Um, for me, um, uh, this chapter is really a very interesting one. Um, ready to see how we can put the whole arm of God mm -hmm. and uh, protect ourselves from the 
evil one. There are so many challenges that I've seen with the uh, FSS, the people during that time, that the challenges that they were going through. And I know there are so many interesting things we are going to learn, which we're going to be, uh, we'll compare them with the Book of Acts, which is still to the FSS. And I'm ready to, to, to see what God has in store for us and what God expects from us and how we can overcome those challenges because the Ephesians were able to overcome them. And through the power of the Holy Spirit, we cannot do it by ourselves. So I'm really longing to see where this chapter will lead us. Thank you. Thank you very much. That we are going to look at the book of um, the letter to Ephesians and just find out uh, why Paul wrote this letter. Uh, who wrote it? We know it is Paul who wrote it, but I want to just confirm that indeed Paul wrote the letter to the Ephesians. I want to confirm uh, who the Ephesians were and why this letter was important for them and ultimately see how we can learn from the lessons that the Ephesians did learn in their time. So our first study, um, Raphael, is on Paul and the Ephesians. And uh, if you may perhaps just uh, privilege us with reading the key text in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 9 and 10 and explain it to us in the context of this study. Okay. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 9 and 10, reading from the King James Version. The Bible says, Having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together all one all things in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. Indeed, uh, the book of Ephesians, Paul's, uh, is, is telling us of Paul's endeavor, Paul's work to establish Christianity amongst the Ephesians and all the challenges. And in essence, he's trying to, to tell them uh, about the love of God and uh, the centrality and the importance of Christ in binding both heaven and earth together. And so he's, he's simply speaking to a people who had uh, who are worshiping multiple gods and uh, in in in, in multiple uh, ways uh, uh, idolatry had percolated and paganism had percolated their culture and is telling them that god has a plan and uh, this plan is found uh, is is a plan of him uniting with us and uniting heaven and earth with uh, with him through Christ, who is our Lord and our Savior, and so the burden of Christ, or the burden of Paul in this particular uh, epistle, and, and the burden of, uh, of of this lesson is to simply show us the importance of Christ and 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 also his his significance in our lives and and in, in our Christian work and how um, that which we desire. You know, most of these people, as they were worshiping idols and all these things, what they were desiring was a connection with the divine. Mm -hmm. And and Paul is telling them that this connection with the divine is possible, mm -hmm. and indeed is as even be, as far beyond how they worshipped has been brought so much close that God became flesh and walked amongst them mm -hmm. and, and, and that God loved them and, and, and this God is looking for them and so this is the burden um, that Paul uh, wants, wants, wants us to get and this is the burden that he had for the Ephesians and the burden of Christ for us that indeed he, has, he makes us one with heaven uh, through himself. Thanks. So um, I gather that you bringing out the fact that Paul is actually affirming the identity of the Ephesians in Christ mm. uh, from, from a point that it appears to me as though the Ephesians had somehow forgotten mm -hmm. or they might have somehow got lost into the moment they were in. And so Paul, being the evangelist, is belaboring and telling them, guys, this is who you are. Mm. And, and in the profound text that you have read, um, it says that God has made known to us the mystery of, of his, his will. will. Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and I can see from your submission that indeed Paul is trying to reason out to them and tell them that there is this beautiful thing that I want you to be acquainted with, I want you to know. And, and that's really interesting as you shall see the affirmation of that identity and uh, into the imagery of the church uh, uh, going going along. Now, we have seen that, um, Sister Janet, as Paul is writing to the Ephesians, he appears to have had an encounter with them before. He speaks as someone who has known them beforehand. And if you may just um, take us the book of Acts chapter 18, um, verse 18 to 21. I'm reading from the New King James Version. It says, So Paul still remained a good while, then he took leave of the brethren and sailed for Syria and Priscilla and Aquila were with him. He had his hair cut off as century, for he had taken a vow. And he came to Ephesus and left them there. But he himself entered the synagogue and reasoned with the Jews. When they asked him to stay a longer time with them, he did not consent, but took leave of them, saying, I must by all means keep this coming feast in Jerusalem, but I will return again to you, God willing. 
and he sailed from Ephesus. What are some of the things that um, point out to you the re manner of relationship that Paul had with Ephesians in this particular text? Um, from what I, I, I can, I can uh, take from that text is um, Paul was a frequent visitor. Mm -hmm. He had made friends. He had, you know, when you make friends, they become like your family. And he had constant been there teaching them about the ways of Christ. Um, considering him coming from uh, a point of view where he, he was persecuting the Christians, and now God converted him, he took the message to his heart to share to the Ephesians. And we see um, the Ephesians, they've always had challenges. That's why Paul, it's like he kept on going back mm -hmm. to the Ephesians. And by this time, he did not go by himself again. It's like he took two other people mm -hmm. whom he had already trained to go and keep on training the Ephesians in the ways of the Lord and help them to be able to be converted, to be able to change from the things they keep on backsliding to, mm -hmm. you know, going back to those false gods, to the mag magicians and all those things, yeah. you know. And it seems like this vice was really attached to the, to the Ephesus, mm -hmm. that it was really hard for them to, to detach themselves. So they get, get out of it, then they still go back they to go it. Back. So Paul really had the Ephesus in his heart and he really wanted them to to change and see Christ for who he is because the minute they they saw the privileges that Christ had they will be able to live the and, and as an example and follow the footsteps of Christ thanks so we see um, you've really pointed out that Paul went to Ephesus but he didn't go alone he had people who accompanied him. And mm. that just goes to show us that even when we are going for missions in those crazy mm. and entered places or places that are considered to be idolaters or have these other uh, significant vices of our times, mm -hmm. it is not good to go alone, yeah. however how much powerful we are. Mm, yes, it's yes. following Christ as we are going with the three angels' messages that we have learned in the previous quarter. It is good to have people with us mm -hmm. who will be able to resonate with the messages that we send. Also, we see the, the longing, intention, and desire of Paul is that while he recognized that he needed to remain, mm -hmm. he also also took note of the fact that he had it, he had to go, mm -hmm. which is a very di difficult decision that an evangelist has to make, That's whether true. to continue in the comfort that you have created with those who are listening to your word, or to move forth in the fear of the Lord and go mm. minister elsewhere. But I love, uh, he ends up by saying that, God willing, mm. I will come to Ephesus. And coming to Ephesus, he did. Brother Raphael, there is a, an interesting situation that happens in Ephesus. Um, that is in the book of Acts chapter 19. Mm -hmm. But as you comment and read text to the, the, the same, I just want you to look into the concept of the change in lifestyle of the people who had the word of God and chose to burn their books. Because mm. uh, the controversy around burning of books has been majorly around uh, dictatorships or people who want to mm -hmm. eradicate a particular mm -hmm. culture, mm -hmm. a particular history. But we are seeing the Ephesians willfully burning their books what's the significance of burning these books and uh, in what way do we now in our times see this as a significant lesson as regards change of lifestyle when we believe uh, it's an interesting um, encounter that's uh, recorded in the book of acts mm -hmm. uh, maybe perhaps uh, we would, i would invite us all to consider it and and and, and get uh, certain lessons there we'll acts see. chapter 19 <laughs> we, we have established that paul had already established a church a congregation in ephesus but at some point he decided he must needs depart but it gave them the uh, the promise that he will come back mm -hmm. and acts chapter 19 we see paul has come back and in the midst of it all he realizes there are certain divisions there's a sort of a mingling of the faith the people who are following christ and also of following the traditions of that time which were tended to be pagan traditions and so eventually uh, Paul, wa Paul, Paul is, is disputing or is he's debating or is he's preaching with them and um, he does all manner of things and God works strongly in him uh, up to around in, in verse 12 we're told even handkerchiefs <laughs> that he had when they were given to the sick uh, so you can see well. maybe these modern day prophets they are they're, they're trying to borrow a leaf uh, from Paul uh, but then uh, perhaps maybe them they just have the handkerchief not the spirit <laughs> but uh, Paul had both and so in verse 13 um, chapter 13 rather of Acts chapter 19 tells us a story and it says the following and then certain of the vagabond Jews so these were Jews you see there was a congregation there but the 
scripture uh, Lucas writes in the book of Acts, he calls them vagabond because they had they were mingling things. In fact, they're saying he, he's calling them exorcists, and they took upon uh, took upon themselves to call over them which had evil spirits the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, "We adjure you by Jesus, whom Paul preaches." If you pause there, even that tells us the, the burden of Paul's message. Paul's uh, message was simply to go and make Christ known. He was simply Christ and Christ uh, crucified, Christ risen, Christ returning. That was the burden of uh, Paul's message. And that has, is what, what we, as we saw, the burden of the three angels' messages. That Christ is the only, um, the only mediator with us and the Father. Christ, in fact, it's a message of the, to the Ephesians that uh, we are all made one in Christ. And so he, 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 they are trying to cast out uh, this demon demons and they are saying we adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preaches and he continues and, uh, and tells us and there were seven sons of one Sceva a Jew these were, uh, these were people who were acquainted uh, with, the, with the Torah with the commandments and chief of the priests in fact told the, it's like the high priest's sons and there are seven of them and see they are doing all these things um, uh, they are mingling these things and the Bible records uh, the following and the evil spirit answered and said Jesus I know and Paul I know but who are you? It's an interesting question and the devil asks you who you are. I don't know. Uh, we live in a society where people really want to be defined uh, by, their, by their accomplishments. These were not um, homeless people. These were men and women, uh, men rather, who are coming from um, pedigree. They're coming from well-established homes. Sons of the chief priests, you know. That I, I think in a, in a, in a, in a religious, uh, religious political culture, they were among the cream of society. Mm -hmm. And so by the time I think the, the people were bringing somebody who was uh, possessed to them, they, they, they valued them and they saw them that this, these people can solve this thing. And so the devil is asking and saying, Jesus, we know. Paul, I know. But who are you? An interesting question. We always we have to ask ourselves, with all our titles, with all our accomplishments, truly, in the spiritual realm, who are we? Uh, who are we? Maybe professors in, in the physical, but in the spiritual realm, are we truly known as Paul was known? Are we truly known as Christ was known? Are we truly known as the patriarchs and prophets of the faith uh, were known? And so, continuing on, uh, the evil spirit uh, asked them, who are you? And, uh, and, 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 and the man in whom the evil spirit, the Bible records, was leaped on them and overcame them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. Seven men were thoroughly thrashed by one man who is evil possessed. Similarly, seven men can be overcome, seven obstacles can be overcome by one man who is full of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Who is full of the Holy Spirit. And that, that tells us that, that sometimes some of these things we struggle with, by the way, it's not an, there's no such thing as tyranny of numbers. It's simply... Who is inspiring you? Mm -hmm. Who is motivating you? Who has sent you? Mm -hmm. If God has sent you, even if you're alone, like it could be a David and Goliath kind of situation, you know uh, by his power and by his might you shall be able to succeed. Mm -hmm. And so we see these seven men, they are not only beaten, they are even uh, have their clothes removed. Mm -hmm. Thorough embarrassment. Thorough embarrassment. And the Bible records they fled the house naked and wounded. In verse 17 it says, And it was known to all the Jews and the Greeks, also dwelling at Ephesus, and fear fell on them all, and the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. That evil possessed man must have done a, a good number on them. Mm -hmm. in, indeed, until the news spreads like wildfire, maybe in the Twitter of their day it was trending. Mm -hmm. uh, this has happened to these prestigious sons, these, these wonderful people, mm -hmm. these, these high, high class people in society. Imagine they were embarrassed, mm -hmm. and the demon said, Jesus, we know. And Paul we know. So they have respect for, for Jesus and they have respect for Paul. Mm -hmm. But for the chief priests and his sons, there is, there, is, there is no such thing. And in fact, they are wounded. They are in hospital. Maybe they are, they are in critical care or something. I don't know. And uh, I don't know what the news was. But it spread like wildfire. The Bible records it spread. And everybody knew. And fear fell upon them. And the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. Same, same thing Paul says. Whether in disputing or in, uh, in, 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 in truth, whatever it is. The gospel moves on. Yeah. Whether uh, there's truth nothing is we can do, on. the truth marches on. Yes. There's nothing we can do against the truth. All that we do, even if we think we're doing it against the truth, is for the truth. Mm -hmm. And so, Christ's name is magnified in their embarrassment. Christ made Christ's name is magnified in their hypocrisy. Christ's name is, is magnified, and, and and the news spreads. And the Bible records, and many that came, many that believed came, and confessed and showed their deeds. And, and the Bible continues and says, Many of them also which used curious arts brought their books together 
these were books of magic, mm -hmm. books of superstition, mm -hmm. maybe rituals, portions. Maybe they, in a modern day, it could be uh, for us as Christians when we accept Christ truly and, and, and see Him for who He is. Maybe it entails uh, us changing even our cookbooks, mm -hmm. you know, our our recipes. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know what uh, what God is speaking to you. What books you need to 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 bring? The Bible records they brought their books together. They burnt them before all men, and they counted the price of them and found it to be 50,000 pieces of silver. Imagine uh, the, the amount of investment that had gone into this which is not productive. Mm. Uh, these are wells which do not bring living water. These are broken cisterns that, we, uh, that they had invested in and, and, and perhaps they were so invested in them that they were willing to, 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 to spend and to be spent at them. Where uh, Here comes Paul speaking to them about Christ. And, and the freedom that, is, that, that, they, that they can find in him. And we realize they, they had really made a great, a great investment. And they, and they burnt all these things. They burnt all these things. And so mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. Amen. Amen. That's, that's very incredible. And uh, Sister Janet, lots of things really come to mind from this account. That we are seeing a people who upon receiving the word of God forsook all, including their investment, the things they held dear to their hearts for the sake of the gospel. Just want to juxtapose it against our own Christian experiences. We tend to live, we tend to find it hard to say, I have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back. Because we still hold on. We, we find that, yes, I have chosen Christ, but I still retain the friends. I still re retain that job. I still retain that neighborhood. Where is the balance really? These people to show us that when they chose Christ, they were willing to burn away their culture, their source of livelihood, mm -hmm. anything that was going to connect them to their past, that was going to connect them to magic, sorcery, they cast it away. They didn't say that, they didn't stay in the presence of sin and say that God is going to make mm. me overcome. Mm -hmm. They actually mm -hmm. removed the sin. They, flee, they flew away from that which could make them sin mm. so that they can remain pure. What practical steps can we take in our Christian war to make us separated totally from the aliwa of the world, from the aliwa of magic, from the, anything that would make us not follow Jesus in trying times? Um, thank you, Becky. Um, from this story... As how Raphael has uh, read for us, um, it was a very big step. You know, when you give your life to Jesus, it's a big step. Yes. Before you came to, to, to make a decision to be baptized. Mm -hmm. I don't know how you used to feel, but the feeling I felt was, you know, I don't know. I'm, I think we say we don't want to, to run with emotions. Mm -hmm. But there's something when mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. comes to your heart, mm -hmm. you just make drastic decisions. Mm -hmm. No one will tell you, stop. Mm -hmm. You will just stop. And you cannot do it by yourself. Amen. You need the power of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. You need to pray. Mm -hmm. You cannot, without prayer, we, we cannot do anything. Mm -hmm. So um, for us to, to make a decision for Christ, first we have to invite Christ in our hearts. Mm -hmm. And the minute we invite Christ in our hearts, what follows? The Holy Spirit mm -hmm. comes mm -hmm. and dwells. Mm -hmm. And the minute the Holy Spirit dwells in our hearts, will make those decisions which seem to be very difficult. Mm -hmm. The decisions of the sins that we really want, don't want to detach ourselves from. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, the, uh, the, the story we've learned, the way they went and burnt everything. Mm -hmm. You can imagine even others confessing and saying, mm -hmm. by the way, mm -hmm. I went back. Yes. Most of us cannot say I've backslidden. It's not yeah. an easy thing for anyone to say that I've backslidden. Mm -hmm. Maybe we, we, we tend to, to, to have the conversation within ourselves mm -hmm. and our God because you're fearing if I tell someone, somebody might use it against How great me. And the make mighty folly. Yes, and, and I'll become an, 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 an example lesson, yes, yes. for others. Mm -hmm. It will be, oh, Sister Janet, this, 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 and this. So um, here we see, no, they never felt embarrassed. To come and you know this was public mm -hmm. you can imagine pouring out your sins publicly yes and they feared they didn't even care what people are going to 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 to, to say about them mm -hmm. so for us we know we are attached to so many things that we really don't wanna let, let go, go mm -hmm. because we are in fact what is even coming out is fear mm -hmm. what will people say yes how will I survive? Mm -hmm. If I don't do this, will God really open a job for me? Mm -hmm. if, I, if I still work on Sabbath, how will my children eat? Mm -hmm. How will I survive? I'm a single person. Mm -hmm. I need 
clothes to where I need rent. We don't put, we don't uh, surrender fully to the will of God. Because the minute you surrender to God, God will give you the food. He will give you the rent. Mm -hmm. He will give you anything that, that you need. So it is the step of faith that we need to have and accept that the minute we surrender everything to God, we are not alone. Yeah? As one person said, if you are with Christ, you are the majority. Amen. Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, we just, um, as we transition, we appreciate the, the particular procedure that perhaps uh, influence this. We see that the highest office in the land, mm. the, one of, the office of the chief priest, um, the sons of the chief priest were, uh, uh, were disappointed mm -hmm. or were desecrated right in the face of everyone to see. Mm -hmm. And I, I see a situation whereby this, uh, these Ephesians see, look inwardly and ask if the chief priest mm. has not been spared. Mm. How much more me? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If the one who perhaps is considered to be praying the most has been, has been exposed, mm -hmm. how much more? Myself. And, and, and that particular impression gets deeply into their hearts mm. to the extent that they choose to not only believe, but also confess. Mm -hmm. You know, they, their belief led them to confess the things that they had been doing, mm. and then they took a step to ensure they remain in the right path. Mm. As we had mentioned, yes, mm. yes, yes, that Paul had visited them earlier. Mm. These were Jews. They knew the truth. Mm. But for some reason, creeping compromise here and there, mm. they found themselves deep, a little magic here, a little sorcery here, and mm. they are now deep into it. So mm -hmm. when the word of God, when the Lord manifests himself this way, they are awakened. Mm. They believe the word, they confess, and they take reasonable steps. I bet more drastic than the first one. Mm. That's true. Just to keep mm. in the right path and to remain true to God. And interesting to note that when they did this, scripture records in Acts 19 verse 22, so the word of the Lord grew mightily, mightily. Mm. and prevailed. Indeed, his truth is marching on. Amen. Amen. Again, we consider um, Acts chapter 19 verse 21. You know, the, the, the interesting looks like there was a lot of activity in, mm. in Ephesus. Um, Raphael, again, I don't know whether you can take us through this um, situation with Diana yes, yes. in Acts 19 from 21. Indeed, uh, we see now people uh, burning their books, mm -hmm. uh, breaking altars, doing all manner of things. And, and, and as you said, truly, verse 20 is true. They might, so mightily grew the word of God and prevailed to the extent that the whole economy of the city was uh, was was shaken you know uh, this thing was affecting people's pockets uh, another preacher said uh, you know when 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 christ was raising the dead the coffin makers were not happy you know uh, he was affecting businesses and 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 similarly the gospel does affect uh, the economy mm -hmm. perhaps it's a, it's, a, it's a thing that we have to discuss even with young people and, uh, and old people alike mm -hmm. what what are the economic consequences of believing in christ you yes. know these are some of the aspects we, we 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 don't really think about but at the end of the day god says our bread and our water will be yeah. secure. Yeah. And so uh, eventually it comes a time in, uh, in which um, verse 24 introduces us uh, and says um, uh, for a certain man named Demetrius a silversmith which made silver shrines for Diana who was a goddess mm -hmm. brought no small gain unto the and, and, and brought no small gain unto the, unto the craftsmen whom he called together with the workmen of like occupation and said sirs you know that by this craft we have our wealth mm -hmm. these are the men and women who are selling books these are the men and women who are making altars these are the men and women whose Who's mess, who's 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 uh, thriving the, on sorcery, on and, sorcery and, 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 and the confusion? You know, they, they had built homes, they had pay, maybe taken their children abroad to study. And they are, they are, many things are happening, they and suddenly loans. they are taking loans <laughs> and, and uh, knowing that this shrine will go. You know, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm building a shrine here, and eventually, along comes the gospel and this breaks everything, mm -hmm. it disrupts everything. And they, and they say, he, he, he they form a union. A workers' union, and they say, "Hey, our 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 profession is under attack. Mm -hmm. This is the craft that we by which we have our faith, our wealth." And then in verse 26, and says, "Moreover, you see and hear that not on, not alone at Ephesus, so not 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 only the domestic market, mm -hmm. but even our exports yeah. are being affected." It says, "But almost throughout all Asia, this Paul." has persuaded and turned away much people, saying that there be no gods which are made with hands. Mm -hmm. 
this money is affecting not only our domestic uh, market but even our exports market. things are not going well mm -hmm. this uh, we need to do something mm -hmm. we need to do something and the government needs to needs to put some stimulus some uh, some checks and balances mm -hmm. there and so we see um uh, it says in verse 27 so that not only this our craft is in danger to be set at naught but also that the temple of the great goddess diana should be despised and her magnificence should be destroyed whom all asia and the world worship it mm -hmm. the gospel simply changes lives mm. the gospel we can we, we cannot ignore the message of christ it's either we accept or we we we, we refuse it was transforming uh, it, it, the it, it is transforming it was transforming the, the world the entire, the entire, paul was setting fires bringing down altars and and he wasn't even uh, he's simply the message of christ I, I find it interesting that having used an economic persuasion he now appeals to their spirituality. Mm. Maybe you would comment on what was the significance of bringing Diana into the mix. Because he's on along me talking about our trade, mm -hmm. our economy, our markets. Then he says that even our temple, mm. our goddess Diana is affected. And then immediately people, people run out now to realize, how yeah. come religion was very emotive to them. Indeed, we are told that the temple of Diana was one of the most magnificent temples mm -hmm. in, in, in Asia back then. And many men and women used to go for pilgrimage there. And maybe perhaps, like in the times of Christ, there was a market there. They were selling shirts, <laughs> saying, oh, uh, there's a whole economy supporting uh, the yeah. tourism, you know. Mm. This is the same way we want uh, tourists to come and see animals, because they'll buy food mm -hmm. they'll buy those maasai curios and all those things it's the whole economy with the, with tourism and and polo is affecting many livelihoods uh, and so they said even this temple this wonderful uh, edifice uh, that is significant that is known worldwide is being affected and with these sayings uh, with these words he is able to stir up the whole town mm -hmm. and they capture some christians uh, paul's companions and they take they take them to the town hall and for a long time the bible records they started ch chanting great is diana of the Ephesians. Great is Diana of the Ephesians. And they were full of wrath and they cried out saying this. In fact, in somewhere else in, in verse 34, we were told that when they knew that he was a Jew, eventually Paul tries to, to, to make his way there. And, uh, and Alexander is there also and he's trying to make a defense. Now seeing as they're, 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 they've, been, they've been surrounded and, uh, and, uh, and, and, and a debate or as a trial of sort, um, uh, a people's court, so to say, was, was being organized. When they realized he was a Jew, they didn't want to even give him an opportunity to speak. Mm -hmm. And in verse 34 he says, with all with one voice for the space of two hours, mm -hmm. cried out, great is Diana of the Ephesians. Mm -hmm. Wow. It's an interesting thing sometimes, you know, when the gospel is silent and the two ministers of God are silent, it's like, uh, almost like Mount Carmel all again. The, the, the prophets of Baal are just making noise and, and shouting and, and, and being rambunctious and, and, all, and, and chaotic. But eventually um, the town clerk uh, appeased the people and told them, we have a, we have a law. We are, we are under Roman, Roman, uh, Roman authority and there's a law and there's a procedure by which uh, things ought to happen. And, all, and this commotion, if it was to be repeated to higher authorities, that there was, a, there was an upheaval in certain territories, they will be called to account. And the Romans were very, very strict uh, with enforcing the law. And so eventually he's able to uh, calm the people and dismiss them and tell them if they have issues with these people, mm -hmm. because these people have not, have not done anything. They've simply preached the gospel. Mm -hmm. In fact, he tells them, uh, these men have done what? Um, it says, and when the town clerk, uh, verse 35, had appeased the people, he said, Ye men of Ephesus, what man is there that knoweth not that the city of the Ephesians is a worshipper of the great goddess Diana and of the image which fell down from Jupiter? Seeing then that these things cannot be spoken against, ye ought to be quiet and do nothing rashly. For ye have brought hither these men which are neither robbers of churches nor yet blasphemers of your goddess. Wherefore, is Demetrius, uh, wherefore, if Demetrius and the craftsmen which are with him, this union, trade union, mm -hmm. have a matter against any man, the law is open. Mm -hmm. And their deputies, let them implead one another. But if he inquire anything concerning other matters, it shall be determined in a law assembly. For we are in danger to be called in question for this day's uproar, there being no cause whereby we may give an account of this concourse. In mm -hmm. fact, he tells them that these people, like, have, they just, they've just simply preached the gospel. There is nothing mm -hmm. that they have done wrong. If there's an, a law that they have broken, then let us follow the law. And with that, he's able to dismiss the assembly. And so it speaks to us also, once again, of the impact uh, that, you know, the devil has, has employed all of us in one way or another, whether we know it or not. Mm -hmm. It is only when you try to 
emancipate yourself that you realize perhaps you've been a slave. Mm -hmm. Only when you try to tell your friends, hey, I don't want to drink anymore, then you realize that perhaps they are not truly your friends. They start mm -hmm. making fun of you. Yeah. They start uh, criticizing your decision, saying you're brainwashed, you know. Then you realize these were fake, fair-weather friends. When you're making certain changes, then you realize even the, the, your environment, the environment around you reacts to, your, to, 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 to the change. And, 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 uh, and so it speaks to us as Christians. When you decide to ban those books, you know, uh, when you decide maybe to use certain language and you will not condone the use of certain language around you, you tell people, hey, please don't speak like that around me. Hey, please don't do this around me. I no longer uh, I like when people are some smoking, music. some music and things like that. Please respect my, my, my newfound convictions mm. and, 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 and who I want to be in Christ. Then you realize that your friends are now saying, oh, you, you've become this, you become... Then you realize they are not truly your friends. Mm. They don't really respect uh, your decisions and, and the changes that you're making are affecting you. When you decide to keep the Sabbath, and you are losing your job, you mm. know, and, 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 your, and your family members and the people who are maybe dependent on you and are wondering, hey, what about us, you know? Mm. You've been doing these things for us. It, don't just be selfish, you know? You're not living alone. You, you, we are here and, uh, and, 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 and we de we're depending on you and you want to follow God. And so it speaks to us of, 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 a, of a situation like this. A riot. The world riots sometimes. Our lives riot when we choose to follow Christ. But Paul is simply, and, and the story of the Ephesians is simply telling us the truth matches on and that God is faithful. Amen. Thank you very much. It's really um, um, <clears throat> not worthy to highlight the role of the town clerk, mm -hmm. especially for those who are practicing Christianity in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. That as we are focusing on how to follow Christ in trying times, He's not highlighted as the Christian of the moment. But one mm -hmm. thing stands out is that when he had an opportunity to descend with the mob in castigating Paul, in descending on them and making the entire riot, or rather legalizing the entire riot, he went back to his professional um, robes. You know, he wore his professional garment and mm. asked, what is the law saying? Mm. And, and for many of us, the protection of civil power has ensured that we enjoy fundamental rights and mm -hmm. freedoms, freedom of worship, freedom of conscience, of assembly, of association, because there are still men and women who are still true to the professions they have been called unto. And this town clerk um, re reminds us and uh, informs us that as God has entrusted us with um, leadership positions in our places of work, in our spheres of influence, we are required to remain true to that which governs the code of the moment, especially because by just remaining faithful in our duty post, a Christian somewhere, somewhere might be saved. Mm -hmm. It is because of the town clerk's fidelity to the laws, the provisions, the procedures of their land that this particular riot in Ephesus was actually quelled and the crowd was dismissed. That's, mm -hmm. that's quite significant for us. Now, Sister Janet, we have seen the events surrounding Paul's visit, the magic, uh, the magic uh, books being burnt, the riot, the economic impacts and all that. But you know, as it was the case, Paul had to leave. And in Acts chapter 20, we see him having a, me a meeting with the elders uh, from Ephesus. If I just uh, may point out one of these things that you can comment on Acts chapter 20, we read uh, verse 24. It says, but none of these things move me, nor do I count my life dear to myself, so that I may finish my race with joy and the ministry which I received from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. Then verse 29, it says, for I know this, that after my departure, savage wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock, also from among yourselves, Men will rise up, speaking perverse things, to draw away the disciples after themselves. Therefore watch and remember that for three years I did not cease to warn everyone, night and day, with tears. What are some of the things Paul would warn us about? First, why was Paul warning them? What was moving him to warn the elders about these particular issues? And looking at our situation, what are some of the things that Paul might warn us against in our time? Um, thank you. Um, Paul, um, the, from the stories of the story of Ephesians, how we've begun, we've seen there's a lot of things happening. <laughs> you know, there's drama. Yes. You know, those people have drama, drama, drama. Mm -hmm. One after another. Today it is about burning of the books. Tomorrow is about that magnificent temple mm -hmm. which stood, I don't know how many, 60, I don't know how many feet tall. Mm -hmm. You can imagine the wonder of the world of that mm -hmm. time. Yes. 
So the Ephesians had things going on anyway. Yeah. Just like a how us mm -hmm. are having our issues right now. Mm. Paul was trying to to inform the elders because you, are, you you see the way he was admonishing the Ephesians, he was even crying. Yes. Because of the things that were happening. You know that when the devil is at work, challenges are always there. Mm -hmm. And if you're not strong enough to face those challenges, you'll never overcome them. Mm -hmm. So um, here, Paul really trembled for the church. And he was looking into the future. He was not looking at just things here. Mm -hmm. He was seeing the attacks that were, mm -hmm. were going to, to come. And, his, and when you look at it from a different perspective, the attacks were not only external. Mm -hmm. They were not only external, they were also internal. Mm -hmm. Because he's saying wolves will be coming. But also here in church, eh, mm -hmm. you should be very, very careful. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes you can, we can be in church and pass things which are not even godly. Yes. Mm -hmm. We can pass things here in church and they really don't bring praise to God at all. Mm -hmm. God is not magnified there. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we might be looking at people who are coming from outside, thinking that they are the people who are going to bring. We are not saying they are not there. They are mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. And starting from where we, the Seventh-day Adventist church began mm -hmm. to where mm -hmm. it is right now, mm -hmm. we can say truly things we are not doing as how we were expected to be doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even the things have changed. We've really worshipped idols in one way or another. Mm -hmm. We've had other gods that is not the true God of the Sabbath. We break the Sabbath. We break the Ten Commandments here and there. And we don't follow what God is expecting of us. So what Paul was um, trying to, to tell the Ephesians is that, for example, Paul never asked anything from the Ephesians to be able to run every the activity. He never went and said, oh, you know me, I need clothes. I need this. You know, them, them days I think even people had two clothes and they survived with them. Nowadays, this, you can, we, we can afford as much as we can. Paul never asked anything, not even a single cent. So it was not his part of the message to call attention to his needs. Mm -hmm. And that's something he's also uh, telling to the church. We should not attract attention. We should not try to use people to gain. You know, mm -hmm. that's not what God wants. God wants us to share his message pure and like that. Even Christ, when he went, people blessed him, but he never went asking, asking for, 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 for money or never asking for demanding. food. Imagine, <laughs> imagine demanding, you know, if, we, if I preach now, I need something. I need to survive, you mm -hmm. know, because hey, don't you see I need to wear something. And that's even the messages that is happening nowadays in our in our, in our church, you know, in Paul's ministry, he was untiring in his efforts to inspire the hearts of the new converts and a desire to do large things for the cause of God. Often he exhorted them to the exercise of liberality. Mm -hmm. Paul gave. He, in fact, that's the message to the church right now. What are we giving? Even when we are doing the missionary. You know, we should be able to give to that towards that cause. Mm. But most of the time, we, we don't use what God has given us for ministry. We tend to suppress the ministry, which now should, the three, from the lessons that we learned, the three angels' messages. Mm. We need to be out there to share the messages of God. So um, the wolves will not always <laughs> miss to be there. Mm -hmm. They will come from without and within. Mm -hmm. So us as Christians and the people who've been given the responsibility mm -hmm. to shepherd the church should be wary and pray hard mm -hmm. and serve God so that God can show them because Paul was able to be, to be shown. Um, the, the, the ladies who, are, who went also, there were the people who also gave uh, messages to the, some, the, the, the guy, I'm forgetting his name, I don't know if it's Apollo or someone, who did not understand and they were able to give bible study mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. him to be able to shed more light mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because the light he had was little but when these ladies came in they gave more light mm -hmm. and that's what is expected of us thank you very much uh, i find it very commendable that after paul disputed reasoned and taught for three years when he was departing he realized that the only way to preserve the message was also through uh, committed leadership. Mm -hmm. And so he did not leave them. He say, mission is over, off we go. No, mm -hmm. he actually called the elders together. 
so that he could have consensus, a meeting of minds with them, and really tell them the situation as it is, that they would shepherd the flock of God while taking cognizance of the dangers within and without. And it's just a call for all of us ministry. How then do we go out ministering and leave this, the flock? What, mm. el- what, what is the way forward? Because I find it disturbing that sometimes you go for mission, but we do not live with a way forward. That's once we commit, we, once we undertake the baptisms, we have a vibrant closing ceremony mm. and give a vote of thanks, we go. But what next? Mm. So Paul is actually telling us that in his ministry to the Ephesians, he actually finished with the task and then now called the people who are going to take charge of the congregation and brought them together to mm. understand few mm. things. Mm. See the ye men, ye elders, mm. this is how we would wish to operate. And mm. I find that would help in keeping the church together so much that when he was writing now the epistle while in prison, he knew that he had left the flock in good hands. Mm. Now, Raphael, as we now transition to Ephesians proper, mm-hmm. now Paul is, is in prison. He's no longer walking the streets of Ephesus. He's no longer being a threat to Diana and the mm-hmm. temple. <laughs> He writes a letter, but I'm more interested in how he begins and ends the letter. We used to be told when we were writing compositions that some markers will read your introduction, (laughs) skip what you have written, and go to your conclusion. Mm -hmm. So if you were to take that approach for now, in looking the epistle to the Ephesians, when how... Uh, when Paul, the manner in which Paul begins and how he, he ends his letter, how does that particular approach speak to his greatest desires for the people of Ephesus? If I may just read, in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 1 and 2, he says, I, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, to the saints who are in Ephesus and faithful in Christ Jesus, grace to you and peace from our God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. And then we get to Ephesians chapter 6. He ends by saying, but that, that is Ephesians 6, 21 to 24. But that you also may know my affairs and how I am doing, Tychicus, a beloved brother and faithful minister in the Lord, will make all things known to you, whom I have sent to you for this very purpose, that you may know our affairs and that he may come forth to your hearts. Peace to the brethren and love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be with all those who love our Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity. Amen. These opening and closing remarks, how do they uh, portray the deepest desire that Paul had for the Ephesians? Mm. I think uh, Paul, 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 Paul wants it to be clear mm-hmm. that even if he is in prison, mm-hmm. they are still on his mind. He's, they are dear to him, you know, whatever, whatever happens. And he wants, it, he wants it also to be clear that he, he's, in essence, he's also in prison partly because of them. Mm-hmm. Because he identifies himself as the apostle to the Gentiles. Yes. He is rejected in Jerusalem because he's taking them, he being a Jew, he's taking the message, he's expanding the gospel towards the Gentiles, you know. Mm-hmm. Perhaps he would have been accepted better if he did more enrich, you know, amongst the Jews. Mm-hmm. But he says, no, no. Even the Gentiles are being called. Even them, this thing of circumcision and circumcision, it's, it doesn't matter. What matters is the circumcision of the heart, the, the, the reception of the gospel. And so he is hated by the Jews because he's going to the Gentiles. And amongst the Gentiles, he's hated because he's bringing a new God who is, uh, inter, uh, who is interfering with, the, with their markets, inter, interfering with their economy, interfering with their gods, inter, interfering with paganism. And so Paul says his situation is simply because he's a prisoner for them. He, he identifies himself as the apostle for Christ. And he he wants them to identify also with himself and he tells them in all these things they shouldn't be worried mm-hmm. shouldn't be worried that god is taking care of him mm-hmm. that this this faith that they, that he uh, that he, he has these sufferings the same sufferings christ had and, and and christ still loves them and christ still loves him while he's in prison and and, and that they should take heart mm-hmm. That they should take heart. And he, more of, um, over, over and over, he even identifies himself that I, Paul, I, Paul, mm-hmm. I, Paul, I'm writing to you. Mm-hmm. He says, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God to the saints which are at Ephesus and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. He's telling them that uh, you guys are saints. Mm-hmm. Uh, God loves you guys. And, uh, and, 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 and don't worry about the things that are happening to me. Don't worry about the things that perhaps may be happening in your midst. But he simply tries to stir up in them to be, to be, to be true. At some point, he even tells them, men, be faithful to your wives. Mm. Wives, do this. He even tell, gives them messages even to the children, mm. telling the children, be obedient. Mm. He's, he's, he, 
It's as if he's not in prison. Mm -hmm. It's as if he's on vacation. You know, when, you're, when, you're, when you've gone for vacation and then you're, you have left the office and then you're, you keep uh, giving Keeping them instructions. Hey, 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 I hope you've not burnt down the house, you uh -huh. know. No, no. But yeah. he, this man is in prison okay. and he's telling them, hey, be faithful, my brothers. This thing, we're passing by and, uh, and, and, and the gospel, uh, we have believed the truth and, uh, and, and you, you, you're not wrong. Amen. Mm. Thanks a lot. Um, it's very interesting that even while in prison, he comes up with the message of peace. Mm. And, and I can't help but remember how the gospel has always been a message of peace, even mm. though it starts war. That's Irony. Mm -hmm. That <laughs> the gospel is a message of peace, but the consequence thereof is that it brings the, the war in us mm -hmm. to make us choose for Christ. Sister Janet, um, interesting to note is that Paul significantly points out a situation that we can all relate to. That in Ephesians 3 verse 13, he says, Therefore, I ask that you do not lose heart at my tribulations for you, which is your glory. Paul is actually afraid that his imp imprisonment may cause me to depart from the faith. Mm -hmm. And looking at our situations, comment on, the fact, on, on our response to, to, to crucibles of life. Remember we had the lesson in the crucible of Christ? Mm -hmm. Many of us, when we face the situations, it might not be imprisonment, it might be childlessness, it might be lack of a job, it might be sickness, it might be bad governance, it might be corruption, overwhelming vices that might make us say, if, 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 if this is the situation, then clearly no God exists. If mm -hmm. such and such a person, I can only imagine, Paul, in prison, then there's no God. Because they have heard about Silas. Mm -hmm. They heard about people, jails opening for other people. Why was Paul's own different? <laughs> Why is my own different? So comment on how we need to relate to situations and the fact that Paul recognizes it as a real problem. That our problems, our tribulation might cause us to depart from God. Um, it is true. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you might be going through a challenge, but you'll ask yourself, mm -hmm. why am I going through it? Mm -hmm. And somebody will ask you, why not you? Yes. Mm -hmm. Whom did you want that challenge to be for? Mm -hmm. <laughs> the Bible says, God allows us to go through temptations that he knows we can overcome. Um, let's give an example of Christ. Mm -hmm. Christ left his throne in heaven. Mm -hmm. Beautiful one. Yes. We've not seen. No eyes are seen. Mm. He came to earth because of the love he has for us. Amen. Went through hatred. People spat on his face. Imagine your creator. Mm. They didn't even know. They spat on his face. They, they, they tried to crucify him even before his time was there. Mm -hmm. They chased him out of his village mm -hmm. because his villagers didn't love him. Mm -hmm. Yeah? The, 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 the leaders of the synagogue even went to his mother. Your, your son, mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. deal with him. Mm -hmm. Christ had to go through all that for us. So the challenges that we are facing, we are not facing them alone. If we have that in mind, that we are not alone mm -hmm. in the storm. If we have Jesus in our hearts, we are not alone in the storm. Mm -hmm. That storm we must face. Mm -hmm. We cannot uh, tell God, this one is too hard. Remove it for me. Mm -hmm. um, give it to Becky. Mm -hmm. Becky can bear that. Mm -hmm. Give me something smaller and softer. Mm -hmm. um, right now we are living in a very, very dangerous world. There are so many bad things that are happening. Our society, mm -hmm. things are changing. Mm -hmm. Behaviors are coming up. Mm -hmm. And um, people are trying to change the norm. Mm -hmm. The norm has always been changed from time before, but now it's even worse. Mm -hmm. We are heading to the times of Noah. Mm -hmm. You know, things that were not pleasing before God. Sometimes you might not want to go through that challenge. You're saying, ah, God, don't bring this one. I don't want my children to grow like this. Mm -hmm. yeah? You know, because I don't want them to have this certain, certain behavior. It's a good prayer. And I believe what needs for, for each and every one of us, we should be rooted in the word of God. You know, when you're rooted in the word of God, challenges come and go. Mm -hmm. Paul faces, faced his challenge. Mm -hmm. You can imagine going to prison. You can imagine falling sick. You can imagine sometimes no food. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you're being punished for, for serving Christ. Ah, yeah. Look at look at uh, there's also a time when he was he had a, he was um, pricked by a thorn, mm -hmm. and God said, "No, this one you're not gonna 
I'm not going to take this away from you. And he had to live with it. My grace is sufficient yes. for you. And it was sufficient. Because mm. even through that, you continued doing ministry for God. So mm. for us, temptations are there. Challenges are there. But we should always remember mm -hmm. that it is not uh, rocket science. Or is, it's not even the, 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 the prophets of that time. Mm. They faced challenges. Mm. Like in Isaiah and everyone, they faced challenges. But it, it was not that whatever they served God was a miracle. No, they chose mm. and purposely decided, I'm going to follow Jesus no matter storm, no matter God. rain, no matter shine. I shine. God is, I'll be with Christ in this. Amen, amen. amen. And, and that's, that's quite in, 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 in impressive that Paul invites us to know that even though he's in prison, the suffering is for your glory. Mm -hmm. But when the, when the martyr, when the Christian is suffering for the cause of the gospel, its end is not an end of despondency, it's not an end of sadness, mm. not an end of hopelessness, yes. but it's an end of glory. Amen. That an end of beautiful things to come that Christ has prepared in store for us. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Brother Raphael, once again, we are getting into the theme of Ephesians. And uh, as you read rightly in our key text, Ephesians 1, 9 and 10, it says, Having made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of the times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth in him. Paul has given a lot of significance to the Christ factor. Mm -hmm. And you rightly said it that Ephesians is about Christ, just like the previous study. One more time, just run us through this Christ-centered theme and how it plays out in Ephesians through the imagery, through the chapters, through the desire to walk in Christ, through being faithful to the vocation that we have been called. What exactly is the Christ factor that Paul is bringing out to us? Uh -huh. I think uh, Paul, Paul wants uh, the Ephesians to understand uh, the gospel in its entirety mm -hmm. and the gospel is a person Amen. Uh, gospel is also a message about this person mm -hmm. and this is, this is the story of christ christ uh, loving us christ creating us christ coming and living amongst us mm -hmm. christ dying mm -hmm. and resurrecting and the promise of his return you know and he, and, and, and he reflects about uh, about uh, and he uses the imagery of, of everyday relationships mm -hmm. for example he speaks about the body mm -hmm. having uh, various parts and he says that the church is actually a, a body. body you see this in ephesians uh, chapter 1 uh, verse um, 22 to 23 and says he had put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all these things to the uh, to be the head over all these things to the church which is the body the fullness uh, the fullness of of him that filleth all in all Amen. he uses all this imagery uh, over and over again mm -hmm. then he also speaks about the church as a building in Ephesians chapter 2 verse uh, 19 to 22 he says now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners but fellow citizens with the saints and the household of God and they and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and and the prophets Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone mm -hmm. he is tying them to 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 the, to the gospel when it was first given to Genesis he's 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 sort of grafting them to the to the to the Abrahamic tree that Abrahamic promise mm -hmm. of, of of he's telling them you have a pie, you have a point there you have a part there though you may be gentiles though you may not be direct descendants, blood descendants of Abraham, you have a part in, in, in God's plan. He tells them, you, you are also part of this house. You there's a portion. And the chiefest, uh, the most important of them all is not the other Jews or the other, the other people, but it is Christ who is the cornerstone Amen. of this building. It Amen. is Christ who is the cornerstone. And it says in verse 21, in whom all the building fitly framed together grows unto a holy temple in the Lord. Amen. Tells them you are a building. Tells them that as a church they are a bride. In Ephesians chapter five, uh, verse twenty-five, verse twenty-two to twenty-seven, it says, as he was giving them the examples of wives submitting, mm -hmm. and he tells them that they similarly should submit themselves to the to, to God. It says, um, uh, verse twenty-four. Therefore, so the church is to, is subject to unto Christ. So let the wives, as the as the church is subject to Christ, therefore also do what um, uh, let let the wives submit. 
Verse 23 says, For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Mm -hmm. He is using uh, language that they can understand. Marriage, he's using building, construction, he's using, uh, he's using anatomy, even the body, the head. He's, he's trying his best. Um, he says the church has a body. And then he finally he speaks about the church as an army. Ephesians chapter 6, uh, verse 10 to 20, he says, Put on the whole armor of God. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it breaks it down to them. Uh, the sword of the spirit and all these uh, all these particulars the breastplate of righteousness uh, having your loins grat about with truth and and your feet showed with the preparation of the gospel of, of peace, peace. Yes. that where we go as christians our message is peace our message is love our message is salvation uh, full and free and then he tells them above all taking the shield of faith, wherewith all you are able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Mm -hmm. He tells them that the Christian journey is, is like a battle. You're like a soldier on the battlefield. And please put on the whole armor. Otherwise, you'll get hurt. Otherwise, you're, you, you'll find somewhere your faith, your faith becomes short. Because maybe you didn't have the belt of truth. Mm -hmm. Maybe you, you didn't have uh, the, the breastplate of righteousness. And he's telling them to, to, to work on themselves, to build themselves, and to go forth valiantly and peacefully to spread the gospel. Amen, amen. Thank you very much for um, that uh, wonderful um, uh, thematic approach to the book of Ephesians. Um, clearly speaking to us, Paul writes the Ephesians and tells them one thing, he invites them to know who Christ is, mm -hmm. gives them the identity that they have in Christ. He recognizes that they are coming from a past a past that is flawed, a past that is hopeless. But while at it, he gives them the future hope that is in Christ Jesus, that in spite of it all, God from the foundation of the world mm -hmm. had already made provision for our salvation and then invites them to lead a life worthy of the higher calling of faith that has been bestowed on them. This is an interesting journey, viewer. This is an interesting journey for you and I to take part in, studying the word of God, living like the Ephesians did in the sense that we experience Paul firsthand and his message. And remember, Jesus writes the Ephesians and tells them that they have forgotten their first love. Have you? This letter is meant for you. That as we study God's word, we may be strengthened together to be people who are shaped into the similitude of Christ. We are closing with our prayer, a prayer from Sister Janet. Praying with us all your prayer requests. It is just one desire that as we begin this quarter, we will walk with Jesus. We will follow him in these trying times and will remain faithful till he comes to give us the crown of life. We are praying. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you once again for being with us. Thank you for giving us an opportunity to study this wonderful lesson, the book of Ephesians. For each and every one of us. We thank you because you've shown us that we are not alone in this journey. That this journey of life, you've already passed through it and we cannot do it by ourselves. Only if we have you in our hearts and in our lives, we can be able to conquer it. We thank you also for the power of the Holy Spirit, that with him dwelling in our hearts, he's able to bring us unto all truth. We thank you for uh, the many blessings you have in store for us this quarter as we begin this, uh, we've begun this lesson. And we ask that you may continue to open um, our minds to be able to grasp everything that you have in store for us this quarter. Be with us and be with also our viewers. We also pray for their prayer requests that are available are, 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 have been mentioned that Lord may you uh, meet them according to their to their needs, O oh Lord, and provide solutions to anyone who's going through uh, ups and downs, even in our Christian journey, that Lord uh, may you strengthen uh, our faith that we may be um, stronger each and every day. And when you come the second time, you'll be able to come and take us home. Uh, forgive us our sins once more and be with us now and forevermore. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Amen.